Hi, welcome to Live with Aaron and Kelly. It's Kelly V. Dolan, and the time that you guys have been waiting for, we have co-creator and executive producer of NBC's 1600 Pen, John Lovett, on the phone. How are you, John? I'm great. How are you doing? Doing good. I've been excited for this interview because I've actually kind of coined you, Josh, and Jason as my three little birds of comedy. Um, and we've spoken, okay. <laughs> we've spoken to Josh and Jason, and now um, you know we get to speak with you. So what I want to talk, I want to jump into, is you first started writing speeches with Hillary, and then um, worked with Obama, and we just <laughs> got off, we just got off the phone with Andre Holland of. 1600 pen and he said that you guys were recently at the white house and i want to know how come we didn't get the invite well there's not that many seats in the theater oh okay um, <laughs> uh so that's that's sort of the number look you were the next you were the next person on the list thank you for um, that, John. that was just, so so it was just unfortunate we just ran out of seats <laughs> and and now john growing up with the name john lovett did how many times did you get the john lovett's how many times did people throw that into the to the mix literally 30 <laughs> seconds ago i was on with a different radio show <laughs> and i got on the show and they said welcome comedian john lovett <gasps> and then they were completely and totally confused by who i was and it was and it was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. Thirty seconds ago, <laughs> John. It, it was amazing. And so 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 they literally didn't know who I was or why I was on the phone. Oh no! And it was on the radio. Oh, uh, they God. thought I was John Lovett. They were very disappointed. But I think I saved it. I, I pulled it. I, I I think I think we ended up having a great conversation. <laughs> but it happens. It happens uh, a little more often than I would like. But not that often. Oh, okay. God. Well, I, I love your attitude about the whole situation. I have to say, <laughs> when, we, when we interviewed Josh Gad, we introduced him, um, my, my co-host Aaron, uh, who's not here today, he introduced him as being worked with Ben Affleck. And Josh was like, uh, oh, I wish I would have known I worked with Ben. But what had happened was my co-host got confused with Ashton Kutcher because they looked alike. So when you see Josh next time, you have to just tell him. Just tell him that Aaron and Kelly said... You you know, congratulations to his good friend Ben Affleck, who won for Argo, and we're so happy that they can now spend some time together. If you could just tell him that, that would be awesome. I will. I will tell him. I promise. <laughs> so, you know, I want to go really quickly to um, a lot of people were asking questions on Twitter and Facebook. They were very excited that I was going to talk to you, and, and they were very aware of which John I was going to talk to. Um, I'm going to go to uh, Facebook. Andre Salcido asked uh, the question for Mr. Lovett, which is is easier being a speech writer for the administration or being an executive producer? Well, uh, you know, I think they both they're both they both can be pretty tough jobs. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, being a speech writer at the White House is a little bit more high pressure mm -hmm. because you do feel like, okay, you know, you know, this is you know, these are really important issues that, sure. that have a lot on the line. Um, but at the same time, you know, when you're working on a TV show and a lot of people are counting on you and a lot of people are you know expecting a lot from you, you feel the pressure too. Um, so uh, you know, they're just I wouldn't say one is necessarily that much harder than the other. Mm -hmm. But they're, they both present their own challenges. I mean, I think uh, 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 there are, you, you get to write far fewer jokes when you're at the White House. But uh, sure. <laughs> uh, um, but uh, uh, no, they they have they both they're. they're uh, they both have their challenges, I guess. You know, when you're at the White House and you're writing these jokes, and you know, I'm sure you throw around a lot of ideas. Do you do you guys ever throw out anything just like, oh man, wouldn't that be so funny if we said, like, how hard is it, especially with your background, you know, with stand-up? How hard was it to be there and kind of like, you know, be careful what you put in in the speech? Well, you know, that's you know, look, I think that's one of the hardest jobs for any speechwriter or anyone mm -hmm. in politics is you know figuring out you know, the line between, you know, how hard to push an argument and, sure. and how much, you know, how far to go. Uh, and I definitely am somebody who likes to go pretty far. So I think sometimes, you know, my job was to uh, write something that went a little too far, and then we got to walk it back and find the right place to, to, to draw the line. Um, mm -hmm. But no, but especially, you know, when we would do those White House correspondence dinners, I definitely would write a lot of jokes that we could certainly not use because mm -hmm. they were, because they went a little bit too far. But that, that helps you figure out what jokes you can tell. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, when you think about getting into a career 
no one really thinks of, oh, yeah, I'll, you know, how about writing speeches for the White House? Like, did you ever think you would be in that position? And how did you get into that position? I know you worked with Hillary first and then Obama, but how did you fall into that? Well, you know, I had been, you know, I had always sort of liked politics and cared about politics, but then, um, uh, you know, I ended up uh, just as an intern on a campaign, mm-hmm. um, and uh, when I when the internship ended a few months later, somebody that I had interned for, you know, asked me if I wanted to come down to D.C. Mm-hmm. and work in the Senate, mm-hmm. and I said sure, and I ended up as a Senate working uh, as a very very junior press aide mm-hmm. for a senator on the Hill, and while I'm working there, I hear from the Hillary Clinton office that they're looking to hire a junior speechwriter, and I had never written a speech before, <laughs> but I sent them, you know, a couple things that I had written, um, and. You know, none of which were speeches, press releases, short mm-hmm. statements, that kind of thing. And I didn't hear anything back. And then, you know, one day I was sitting at my desk and I got an email from the communications director asking if I was funny um, <laughs> because Hillary was going to one of those roast dinners. And uh, I ended up writing a couple jokes for then Senator Hillary Clinton. And I guess that was something that helped push me over the edge because the next thing I know, I was a speechwriter for. Um, um, Hillary Clinton uh, in her, you know, in her Senate office, and then for her reelection, and then ultimately for her presidential campaign. How nervous were you when that uh, presented itself? I was so nervous. I, you know, I remember the first time. I, I was so nervous. I was, I was what? I couldn't have been more than. I was 21, maybe 22. Wow. I was. It was. I was not that far out of college. And then I, all of a sudden, I found myself sitting across from Hillary Clinton, <laughs> and I was. I was a wreck. I have like, absolutely no idea what I said. I have no recollection of the meeting. I remember her piercing eyes. Mm. That's all that I remember. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, the next thing I know, there I was writing speeches. Very good, very good. And, you know, it's just interesting. Um, you guys are very young. Like, when you think about people producing and writing um, between Jason, Josh, and yourself, how did you guys all link up for this project? Well, you know, it, you know, we, we um, when I first came out to L.A., I was trying to figure out what I was going to write about, and mm-hmm. someone heard that I was going to write a comedy, and they said, well, Jason Weiner and Josh Gad, they have this idea um, mm-hmm. for uh, a, a show about the White House. And mm-hmm. I said no, because I didn't want to do a show about the White House. Mm-hmm. I just came from there. <laughs> um, and But Jason, you know, who had directed all these episodes of Modern Family, and Josh, who was this incredibly funny star of Book of Mormon, you know, they, they, were, they had this idea about a dysfunctional uh, first family and about a screw-up son of the president to move home to the White House from college. And we got to talking, and we realized that it wasn't a show about politics or budget resolutions. It was a, a family show about an ordinary family in an extraordinary, crazy setting that is the White House. And the more we talked about it, the more excited we got. And the next thing we know, we were you know, talking about it with NBC, and then we were making a pilot, and a year later, we're on television. Very good. And, you know, I have to say, when we did speak to Josh, he credited you as being the person to kind of ground the show. Um, how, how has the dynamic between the three of you guys been? Is it just, you know, easy breezy, you guys get along, or ha- has there been any challenges with the three of you guys? Well, look, you know, when, when, whenever three people come together to do a creative project, you know, I think there's going to be disagreements. But what's, and, I, and we've definitely had our share. You know, there were definitely late nights where, especially when, 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 when Jason and I were working on the pilot script, that things got pretty tense because, you know, we would disagree about what was best. Sure. But what's, but, but, but what's been um, amazing is that the three of us, you know, we, we all have different points of view, and I think we all have different takes on what's funny, that's, as, any, as any group of three people will. But mm-hmm. that creative tension, the differences, you know, help us figure out what the show is. And I think that, that tension is what has helped us make this thing what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think we've all been really proud of the thing that we've been able to create together. And so, yeah, there are differences, but those differences kind of help us help contribute to the dynamic of the show. And, you know, plus also Mike Royce, who was the executive producer of uh, Everybody Loves Raymond, uh, has come on board as well. And it's really the four of us who have been able to kind of figure out what the, what an episode is, what the show is, um, and what makes it funny. And, and we're just, I, I think, you know, a group of four people making a show with all these disparate backgrounds and, and uh, it could be a disaster. And I think there, are, you know, Hollywood is littered with the stories of failed shows that didn't work because the people who created it started not getting along or didn't see the same way about what a show could be. And the four of us work together so well and are such a great team yeah. that it's helped make the show what it is. 
Very good, very good. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us. And next time you go to the White House, hit us up. We'll definitely, you know, escort okay, you sure. and make sure that you're all right there. And uh, <laughs> we'll be te- checking out 1600 Pen every single Thursday starting at 930 Eastern Pacific Time. Thanks so much, John. Love it. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. Take care.